So in this video, I'm going to be talking again about the World War Mafia event. And now if you register for this event, then you should be able to see this screen whenever you open this event in the game. First option is the enter battle option, but you can only enter the battle once it begins and the battle hasn't begun yet. It's going to begin in like uh, 12 to 14 hours or something. Then the next option is to check the organization info. This is the info about your organization that these that is the 20 member organization that you have. Now here you have organization technology and here you can see that there are different skills that you can that you can use during the battle. Now these skills can only be used by the commanders and in order to use these skills you have to gather something called combat tech points and these points can only be gathered during a battle. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to start the battle with zero tech points and as you gather more tech points in the battle, your commanders will be able to use these skills by spending your tech points. So for example, there's this ops raid skill which says in the next 10 minutes, the next raid initiated by the skill user will grant participants the same ops buff as the skill user. So this is somewhat similar to the super raid, but basically instead of granting the stats of the raid leader, you get the stats of the skill user. So then there are a bunch of different uh, skills that you can read about over here. I'm not going to go over all of them. But then you also have this organization chat where you can chat with your organization. We haven't really spoken much here. Then there's organization members. Here you can check all the different members that are there in your organization. That is all the 20 players. And in fact, there are a lot of big spenders in my organization. So it really seems like Mafia City did manage to somehow randomly get all of the big spenders inside this event. I'm really curious what the probability would be of such a random event happening where all the big spenders manage to register for this event, but the small spenders just don't get into this event. So here you can see we have Luke as our commander with 1.5 billion power, and then we have like 3.1 billion, 3.1 billion, and 1.5 billion vice commanders. And then there's a 600 million, 200 million, 200 million, and so on. And then I'm here at the bottom with 59 million power, and there's one more guy below me at 48 million power. Then here you can see the organization rewards. There's victory rewards, uh, which you get this, and then there are fa failure rewards, which basically gives you half the, half the victory rewards. So I think the best items in the victory and failure rewards are these training manuals right here. All the other items seem garbage. Then there's also organization points. So basically you get points for occupying buildings during the battle. And so the more buildings you occupy, the more organization points you'll be able to get. And whenever you reach certain milestones, you will be able to claim these rewards in your organization. Now, I don't know if these milestones reset every battle or if they're for the entire event, but I'm pretty sure that the technology will reset every battle because your combat points, I think, should go to zero every single battle. Okay, so now that we talked about organization info, the next one is organization or ops buff. And this is pretty simple, it's straightforward. So here it says select the purple demolition ops buff. And the buff is basically damage dealt is doubled and damage received is halved when leaders battle in a purple demolition base. So if you select the purple buff, you'll get this double damage and half damage received buff in purple buildings. If you select the yellow one, you'll get the double damage and half damage received buff in yellow buildings. If you select the green one, you'll get it in green buildings. Now there's also this uh, orange buff, which is a support ops buff. It increases the old warehouse leader gathering speed by 100%, which basically means it doubles your gathering speed, and it increases op speed by 50% when leaders pick up dropped battle points. 
So I think this buff is really good for players that aren't going to be participating in the battles. I think it's good for weaker players that will mostly be gathering and just picking up points during the battle instead of fighting for buildings. I think the building fights are going to be for the big players in the team and the gathering is going to be for the smaller players who can't really do much in big battles. So I think I'm going to go with this buff for now and you can obviously change after even after you confirm you can change this. Uh, you just need to make sure that you have a buff selected before the battle begins. Once you enter the battle, this buff cannot be changed unless your commander uses a skill. So that is the ops buff. Uh, the next one is battle building. And here you can actually see the entire map. This is going to be your headquarters and then this is going to be the enemy headquarters. And basically you're going to start off here. If you occupy this building, you get 100 million points for your organization. And the person that occupies this building, the first person to enter the building, will get 50 million uh, points for occupation. Now you need to... Actually, I don't know if you need to stay in this building for 5 minutes to occupy it. But all these other buildings to occupy them, you have to stay in these buildings for 5 minutes. It says right here, the guard base must be continuously occupied for 5 minutes for a successful occupation. So I don't know about the expedition base, but these other buildings, you need to stay inside these buildings for five minutes to be able to occupy them. So the organization points, this these are points that your entire organization gets, while the personal points are the points that only one person from your organization will get. So in this case, you can think of it as clash of mafia it's very similar to occupying buildings in clash of mafia for example whenever you enter a building in clash of mafia if you're the first person to enter the building the building will have your name inside of it now if somebody enters after you and you're still inside the building the name won't change but if you leave that building then the next person who entered their name will be under that building so whoever's name is under that building will get these points for occupying the building whenever the building is occupied. So keep that in mind. That's how the personal points work for, the, for these buildings. Now, as you go farther away from your expedition base, you get fewer ally organization points for occupying buildings and your enemies will get more organization points for occupying these buildings. So for example, my if, if they occupy my expedition base, the enemies will literally get zero points, but we get 100 million and 50 million points. In the same way, if we occupy the enemy base, we get zero points, but the enemy will get 100 million and 50 million points. But then as we go further away from our expedition base, we get fewer points. So in this case, we're only getting 22.5 million points for occupying this building, and the enemies are only gonna get five million points. This is because this building is very close to our expedition base and very far away from the enemy expedition base. But as we get closer and closer to the enemy expedition base, for example, this building right here, this gives our organization 17.5 million points, but the enemies get 10 million points for occupying this building. Then there's this fort at the center, which gives you exactly equal points because it's the same distance from both expedition bases. And then there are these enemy buildings. If you occupy these enemy buildings, you're obviously going to get fewer points than the enemy organization. So that is how these buildings work. Now you also get continuous uh, organization points. So after you occupy this building, your organization will get 110,000 organization points every single minute. And whoever's name is under that building will get 55,000 personal points every single minute. So for every two organization points you get, the member whose name is on that building will get half the amount of personal points. So for example, if I occupy a building for my organization, my organization will immediately get 10 million organization points and I'll get 5 million personal points immediately. 
And then for every minute that my name is under that building, my organization will get 110,000 organization points and I will get 55,000 personal points. But the moment someone else enters the building, so someone else from my clan enters the building, now the building is going to have a different name because I'm not in the building anymore, someone else is in the building. And so I'm gonna stop getting personal points for, from this building and the other person who entered the building will start getting personal points for that building. So I hope I've made it clear how personal points work in this event. Now these buildings have different buffs. For example, the purple buildings will reduce the organization's building occupation time by 1%. So all of these buildings require you to occupy them for five minutes to be able to successfully occupy them. But there are 10 of these purple buildings in total. So if you occupy all 10 of these pur purple buildings, that five minutes will go down by 10%. Now in case of the expedition base, you need to occupy that for 20 minutes continuously to be able to successfully occupy it. So if you have all 10 purple buildings, then that time will go down from 20 minutes to 18 minutes. Then there are these yellow buildings. These yellow buildings give you a 4% ops speed boost. And then there are these green buildings which give you 200 combat tech points for every minute they're occupied. So these green buildings are one way of getting combat tech points and then there's also old warehouses that we'll talk about later. So that's how the buildings work. I think that I've covered all of the buildings. Also, one more thing. You can see that I'm in the Green Dragons family, but in the game, my family is actually the Salazar family. So it doesn't really matter which family you are in the game, it'll just place you in a random family for this event. So I just wanted to make that one point clear before moving forward. The next one is this rewards. You can check what rewards you're gonna get. You get these, these rewards for just testing the event and then there are round robin tournament rewards. So basically, if you get one point in the tournament, you get these rewards. If you get two points in the tournament, you get these rewards. And you get a point every time you win a battle. So there will be five battle totals. If you win all five, you'll get the best rewards. If you win one, you'll get the worst rewards. If you win zero, you're not gonna get anything. So those are the rewards. Then there's contest schedule where you can check which factions are going to face each other on which dates. You can check the schedule for all the five days. And then there's the point store where you can use the points that you gain during the event to buy various items. But keep in mind that the points will clear at the end of the events. So this event will end whenever the five battles come to an end. So make sure you use all of your points immediately after the fifth battle. Otherwise, your points will be cleared and that is they'll expire and they won't be carried forward to the next event. One more thing, you can check your enemy team by clicking on this exclamation point here. Uh, for example, here I can see all of my enemies. Unfortunately, I cannot click on their profiles to view more information but at least I get to see their names. Now you can tap on this exclamation point to view even more details. However, this is just old information that we saw in the last video, but you can also click on this button right here and here they've updated some new information. So I'm gonna cover just the important points uh, that are shown over here. The first one is that the leaders at the top of the leader list of the occupying ops will obtain personal battle points. So as I said earlier, whoever's name is under the building, only they will obtain personal battle points for that building. Not everyone occupying the building will obtain personal battle points for the building. Only one leader will obtain personal battle points per building. So keep that in mind. Also, if the building is empty, then whoever's name is still on that building, that is whoever was the last to leave the building, they will receive personal battle points for that building. Now, if the ownership changes during the game, that is, if the enemy faction captures a building during the game, 
then the organization points will be dropped around the building and now leaders will be able to send their ops to pick up these organization points. Now, whenever you go to pick up these organization points, let's say there are 20 million organization points on the floor and I go and pick up all these 20 million organization points, I will get 10 million personal points as well. That is half the amount of organization points because I picked up those 20 million organization points. So leaders who pick them up will add them to their organization and they'll also obtain half the amount in personal battle points. You can also get points for killing enemies. Uh, only T6 to T12 troops will provide you with points. You get 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, and 18 points respectively. So earlier we saw that you can get combat tech points by occupying those green buildings on the map. But there's another way of getting combat tech points and that is from gathering from old warehouses. So gathering from old warehouses will provide combat tech points, personal battle points, and organization points. You get all three by gathering from old warehouses. Now I think that these old warehouses are simply going to be tiles on the map that you can gather from, just like resource tiles on the city map. That is just my opinion, I'm not 100% sure, but from reading all of this, that would be my best guess. For every combat tech point that you gather, you receive 100 battle points, personal battle points, as well as organization points. So you don't get half the amount of personal battle points for doing this. You actually get 100 of both personal battle points as well as organization points. Then they've show, shown you the win and loss condition. That is, if you eliminate the enemy expedition base, you just win and the battle ends immediately. Or if you can't eliminate the enemy's expedition base, then whoever has the most points at the end will win the battle. And I think it's best to not eliminate the enemy's expedition base as soon as possible because this way you get more time to collect more points and that way you're able to buy more items from the store. Also, allies and enemies can get first occupation battle points only once. So as we saw here earlier, if you go to buildings, you can see that there's this first occupation point. You can receive this only once. So only one person will get this 10 million points and they can receive it only once. If someone else occupies it from the enemy afterwards, they're not gonna get the 10 million points. They're only gonna get the 130 points per minute after that. Also, the buildings that you've occupied will protect turfs that are within its range. So you'll be able to teleport next to buildings that you've occupied and they will protect you while they're occupied by your faction. Also, buildings only need to be continuously occupied one time. For example, when I talked about these buildings, I said that the first time you occupy these buildings, they must be continuously occupied for five minutes. So let's say I enter this building and I occupy it for five minutes for the first time and now it becomes mine. If I leave this building and someone from the enemy faction enters this building, they will immediately occupy this building. They won't have to wait for the five minutes again because you only need to do that one time. Now about healing. The healing is going to work similar to family treasure. There's no capacity on the amount of wounded crews you can have. Also, the healing speed is increased, just like in Family Treasure, the healing speed is increased massively. Now, I'm not sure if, if the increase is going to be the same as Family Treasure, but it's definitely going to be more than the regular healing speed that you have. And also, you don't need any resources for healing, just like Family Treasure. And if you don't heal your wounded crews when the map closes, they'll automatically be healed whenever you reach home. And finally, there are some special conditions that you need to be aware of. The first one is that op speed ups cannot be used on the map. So you cannot speed your ops to buildings to reach them quickly on the map. Also, all crime op speed buffs are set to 100%. So I don't think speed equipment is going to help that much because I think everyone is going to have the same op speed. So you should optimize your equipment for stats and not for speed. That is assuming that everyone's op speed is going to be the same. 
Obviously, if equipment helps with op speed, then maybe you should also use op speed equipment as well. And leaders can only relocate their turfs to their own building areas, which we just talked about earlier. The buildings that you occupy will allow you to port close to them and they will also provide you with protection. That is, the enemies won't be able to attack you. And then the rescue and death battle skills are invalid on this map, which is pretty obvious. So I think I've covered pretty much everything that I know about this World War Mafia event. Let me know your thoughts about this event in the comments down below. Before I end this video, I'd like to thank all of my patrons for the support. To support me, you can find my Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching the video guys, and I will see y'all in the next one.